Throughout the Cyberpunk 2077 story, we get to meet a lot of characters, both friend and foe, later down the line. And in this video in particular, we're going to be talking about Oda. He is Hanako Arasaka's bodyguard, who also happens to be a cyber ninja trained by Takamura. He ends up being one more threat to V down the line, but that doesn't mean we can't take advantage of his insane build. Now, if you haven't played through the Cyberpunk 2077 campaign, I'm going to talk about a couple of story spoilers here. So, just a forewarning. If you don't remember Oda, he's actually the guy that meets you and Takamura down by the river in the Down the Street mission and also is the main enemy at pretty much toward the end of the Play It Safe mission where you're trying to get Takamura onto the float to see Hanako. Not only is he rocking an unknown variant of the Mantis Blades, he also is using Optical Camo, the TKI-20 Shingen Smart Submachine Gun, and the iconic katana that you can pick up after you defeat him, the Jinchu Maru. First, let's talk about what weapons I'm going to be using for this build. Starting with the iconic katana I already mentioned, the Jinchu Maru. This thing is broken, so the last hit in a combo guarantees crit damage. While optical camo is active, all hits are critical and allow you to leap toward your target, increases damage against elite enemies. So as long as you have optical camo, every hit you're going to do no matter what is a crit hit and having the increased damage to elite enemies, this includes max tech. I'm gonna put a clip here, but I was able to pretty much kill every single max tech enemy right off of spawn with pretty much just this sword by itself. Now for the second weapon, like it mentioned in the wiki, you can use the TKI-20 Shingen Smart Submachine Gun, or you can go for the iconic version, which is the prototype Shingen Mark V. Definitely Google on how to get this thing. It is very nice. So first up, it fires explosive rounds. The modified automated targeting system guides bullets to up to three targets while aiming, perfect for when you're outnumbered. So we have the dichotomy of being able to have optical camo with a katana that can really take advantage of it on top of a submachine gun that is disgusting when <laughs> you're out in the open. Now for the last weapon, you can honestly put on any other SMG here, but I like the Arasaka branded Shiga right here. You know, it just kind of fits the theme of Oda and Arasaka and everything like that. Plus, the one thing that I do like about the submachine gun is that you can put on a silencer on it. It is a power submachine gun and also have a sight on it. And I'm also utilizing Big Meg, which increases my magazine capacity by 55%. I do get a minus 20% on my reload speed for this, you know, tier 5 mod. But the reason being is that if we're already going to be taking advantage of optical camo for stealth reasons, we can also have a submachine gun that can potentially be good for those conditions. Next, let's talk about attribute point distribution and what perks to look for under the skill trees. Note, I am max level. I am level 60 because I have Phantom Liberty and I have every single perk point available. Starting with the body, we have at 18 points. You at least want 15 to take advantage of this skill tree here, but no, I don't have anything under intelligence. So if you did want to take one point away from body just to have this first tier of intelligence unlocked so you can't take advantage of, you know, the car quick hacker for certain things for the story or anything like that, that's totally fine. But at least have body at 15, mainly because you want to take advantage of adrenaline rush here. Yes, all these perks down here, you know, painkiller, speed junkie, army of one, comeback kid, and dwarf head are all pretty much basic perks you should have for health regen purposes and improvements to your health items, including blood pump. You definitely want that, but adrenaline rush here is basically in addition to the base effects of your blood pump cyborg and health items that now also give adrenaline equal to 30% max health and you can actually see it in the top left. It basically just gives you more health, which is nuts. And then being able to take advantage of perks like uh, Unstoppable Force. So when you have Adrenaline Rush, you gain immunity to movement speed penalties, knockdown, blinding. That's You can get hit by a car. You won't get knocked down. Juggernaut, this one's really good. You get increased movement speed and a 10% damage boost. And there's something with Calm Mind. You get a three second delay of the Adrenaline Rush decay so you can have it for longer. With reflexes, we maxed it out to level 20. As you can tell, we are taking advantage of a lot of perks under the reflex skill tree. So first, let's start with the middle section. This is all about movement. You know, you definitely want slippery, mainly because it also brings us over to the right tree, which is all about swords and the katana, aka the Jin Chu Maru. Again, max out dash, so you can get that to get air dash, so you can dash in midair. And then tailwind, which is the legend perk, so it's plus 25 from performing air dashes and double jumps. Air dashes do not consume stamina. Consuming stamina, we want to reduce that as much as we possibly can. As you can tell, I have a lot of the other perks on this skill tree filled out here. So you can, I would recommend putting them all on, but if you want to take off some of them and put them somewhere else, that's totally fine. The main thing here, you definitely want mad dash and slippery that go over to this skill tree over here. 
With Slippery, again, we're going to be using Lead and Steel. It allows us to block incoming projectiles, and those can be reflected back at targets, which we're not going to be really taking advantage of that a lot, but it is kind of helpful. You definitely want Seeing Double so you can gain Flash and Thunderclap. This allows you to have a very far leap with the Heavy Attack for a Katana. It's extremely far. It's super broken. And you can put on Bullet Deflect as well, which, you know, it reduces stamina cost when blocking. You definitely want the Finisher Blade Runner, so it gives you the, you know, Blade Finish for uh, Mantis Blades and your Katanas, which is nice. Again, going the distance, Opportunist, and Flash of Steel, all very good. And then lastly, Slaughterhouse. All attacks counter attacks and deflect the bullets apply bleeding, which increases the dismemberment chance. Bleeding cannot kill enemies, but does make them more susceptible to finishers, and you get plus 25% stamina for dismemberments. Now the left skill tree on our reflexes is all about assault rifles and SMGs and if you remember right we are going to be using double SMGs and there is a reason for that. I'm not just kind of pulling that out of my butt. So first up definitely max out ready rest and reloaded. You want tunnel vision, spice of life, and mind over matter. Again you want to max out all the way up to sharpshooter. Each successful shot gains a stack of sharpshooter which is plus 7% stamina regen for two seconds per stack. Stack seven times, new stacks reset the duration. All stacks are removed when the duration ends. You definitely want shoot to chill, spray and play, practice makes perfect, and gun dancer. You do not need the perk that connects, you know, the middle skill tree and the left skill tree, which is Eric Kereznikov. We're not going to be using that piece of cyberware, so you can save yourself that perk point. But the main one is the legend perk, submachine gun fun. Swapping some machine guns is faster and automatically reloads them, plus 22% fire rate after swapping to an SMG, normal reloading ends the effect. So <laughs> you can just have both of our SMGs switch off and on, have them auto reloaded and have an increased fire rate. Yes, you might go through ammo pretty quickly, but it just makes them even more effective. Under technical, we max it out to level 20. We definitely want to take advantage of the legend perk here, but let's start with all things cyber. Again, it basically gives us an additional stat modifier, for our cyborg and reduces cyborg cost. And then you definitely want Chrome Constitution with Renaissance Punk, Lucky Day, and Driver Update. Whenever you're going to upgrade your cyberware, you definitely want to put on Chipware Connoisseur. You can't just take off Lucky Day and put on Chipware Connoisseur. And then when you're done, you can take it off and put Lucky Day back on, something like that. It doesn't really matter what perk, but Chip Connoisseur basically allows you to choose two other options when upgrading your cyberware. So you can really cater your build, which is nice. And then you definitely want License to Chrome. You max all this stuff out. Uh, you know, increased cyber stat modifiers, increased armor, and you get the cyber slot for your skeleton. And with ambidextrous, you get the extra cyber slot for your hands as well. You definitely want cyborg as well on top of extended warranty. We don't need built different because we're not going to be using the cellular adapter cyber, but you definitely want edge runner. So allows you to exceed cyber capacity by up to 50 points at the cost of minus 0.5% max health per point. When you neutralize an enemy during combat, there is a 0.1% chance for each point your overcapacity that you'll enter the fury state in the state you'll gain plus 10 percent damage plus 30 percent crit chance and plus 50 percent crit damage it's essentially cyber psychosis all in all but it's extremely good for cool i have it at level 20 but you really only need it at level 15 again with all my characters i have to cater what builds i'm gonna do where so if you did want to take the five points from cool and the three points from body since you don't need 18, you at least just need 15. You could dump those into intelligence, so you can take advantage of the right side here, which is about smart weapons, this whole right section. Again, the middle section, you know, and the left section is all about, you know, quick hacks and the cyber deck and all that stuff, which we can't really take advantage of with this build. And to be honest, the only perks you would be able to take advantage of is acquisition specialist and no escape. And honestly, these don't really matter, so that's why I just poured it into cool. So if you did want to use like different weapons like knives or pistols, you can potentially do that for a future build, but again, just keep that in mind. The main thing to focus on is the middle tree and this little tree at the bottom right. So again, you definitely want feline footwork with unexposed small target and blind spot. And then ninjutsu, this unlocks crouch sprinting. So again, we are gonna be using optical camo so we can be fairly stealthy with this build and being able to take advantage of that is gonna be good here. Definitely want serpentine with creeping death and shinobu sprint. The main thing with creeping death is that when optical camo is active or you're undetected, when you neutralize an enemy, it gives you plus 50% health, plus 50% stamina, and plus 10% movement speed for six seconds. So you can be detected, have your optical camo popped, and you get all these bonuses. Anyway, you don't really need Vanishing Act, which automatically activates when you're crowd sprinting, so you automatically use your optical camo. It's not absolutely necessary, but you can use it if you want. In the bottom right, with Killer Instinct, plus 25% with knives, axes, and silenced guns outside of combat. They also provide a preview of estimated damage. 
This is really good for stealth missions. And then gag order, landing an attack on an enemy right after they detect you will delay detection from other nearby enemies. So if you kill them very quickly, especially if you're in something like the San Devastan, you'll pretty much stay undetected. Then lastly, quick getaway, plus 10% movement speed after neutralizing an enemy while undetected. Last 30 seconds until you are detected and can stack up to two times. For intelligence, I'm just going to leave it at three. But like I mentioned, if you want to try to get up to nine, that's totally fine. But I just know that Oda is definitely not a net runner. And lastly, if you have Phantom Liberty and access to the Relic skill tree, I would recommend focusing on emergency cloaking first. Again, it's just going to improve the optical camo and make it even better. And then you can use sentry protocol here. When crouched, becoming detected by an enemy will temporarily slow time, dodge or dash out of the enemy's line of sight to immediately exit combat. This is essentially the synaptic accelerator cyberware without having to have it on which is pretty good and then you can focus on jailbreak which gives you improvements to our arms cyberware such as the mantis blades gorilla arms projectile launch system and the monowire we are going to be using mantis blades which dismembering an enemy or performing a finisher with mantis blades will charge the next leap attack so now you can hold for a heavy attack and it'll turn into a long range leap a charge leap attack with Mantis Blades has a plus 30 meter longer reach and deals massive damage with a wide slash that hits the target and other nearby enemies. Killing an enemy with this attack also dismembers them. And then if you did want to improve it even more, you can use spatial mapping, which all leaps from Mantis Blades now cripple enemies and increase dismemberment chance against those same enemies for 10 seconds. Pretty much literally allows you to like bounce from one side of the map to the other. And then lastly, you can look into using vulnerability analytics, which shows vulnerabilities on enemies, armor, and cyberware. It basically gives you 100% crit chance and plus 25% armor penetration and other weak spot damage bonuses. And when you destroy the vulnerability, it causes an EMP blast that damages, you know, enemies nearby. And you can add on machine learning, which destroying a vulnerability grants a 10% frequency of new vulnerabilities appearing and a plus 5% crit chance against vulnerabilities after that and it can stack up to five times once you reach the max stack all those things double next let's talk about what cyberware i'm going to be using and note under the wiki for oda it only shows two pieces of cyberware that are guaranteed that he uses first up being the mantis blades now it's an unknown variant but since his are glowing red i figured it has to be a version of the thermal mantis blade so those are the ones i'm going to be using if you want to use the regular you know physical ones or even the max tack ones which you can get you can use those if you'd like i just figured the glowing red with thermal kind of makes sense to me and the only other one is optical camo which is under the integumentary system again if you max up to tier 5 plus plus minus 90 percent visibility to enemies for seven seconds you know making it more difficult for them to detect you and it has a cooldown of 50 seconds and note you have to have it applied under quick access under the gadget so you won't be able to use any grenades because you have to use the optical camo cyberware now everything else is just my interpretation this is what i find really effective for this build first up starting with the operating system again oda is fast from the gameplay so i definitely wanted to give him a sand devastan so i'm going to be using the militech apogee sand devastan the iconic this is easily the best one so when it's active slows down time by 85 percent plus 15 percent headshot damage crit chance and crit damage neutralizing an enemy when active gives a plus 20 percent extended duration but the main thing is giving us plus 22 percent stamina back if we are going to be facing a lot of enemies whether we're shooting our guns or using the katana even with the reduced stamina cost we definitely don't want to run out of stamina Going over the frontal cortex, we're going to be using the Mechatronic Core for the increased damage to drones, robots, mechs, and turrets. Next, I like self ice personally because I can automatically negate an enemy quick hack. Now, the cooldown is 35 seconds, but we are going to be using the iconic version of the Newton module, the Axolotl, which can be obtained by completing all of Regina's gigs in Watson, or if you have Phantom Liberty, you can actually purchase it at Ripper Docks. But minus 12.5% cooldown. Note, this is tier 5 plus plus it's maxed out but it is a big cooldown uh when instantly for all cyberware after neutralizing an enemy so after nine kills i pretty much have all my cyberware back up to 100 percent usage under the skeleton i'm going to be using the bionic joints for the armor it is very low cyberware cost and gives a very solid boost to our armor stat next i'm using epimorphic skeleton so i get a percentage bonus to my max health if you did want to replace this for something like parabellum or if you have the cyberware capacity for it the Ra Ra avis basically these give a percentage bonus to your armor but i like the health one a little better since we are going to be in this range of using edge runner so we already have a minus 110 of our max health so Having a boost to our health is basically going to counteract that. And lastly, I do like Dense Morrow, which gives us a bonus to our melee damage, but at 
a increased stamina cost usage. I think this is totally worth it though. Under the nervous system, I'm gonna be using the iconic version of the adrenaline converter, which is the Adreno trigger. It is plus 30% movement speed for 60 seconds when entering combat. You know, the adrenaline converter is plus 40%, but it only lasts for seven seconds, so keep that in mind. I do like reflex tuner, so it does slow down time for 60% for 4.5 seconds when your health drops below 25%. And then lastly, I'm gonna be using Neofiber, which basically gives me a plus 10% to my mitigation chance and strength. Mitigation uh, basically has a chance to reduce incoming damage um, you know, dependent on your mitigation strength. So you can take less damage. Some people were saying use Stabber, which gives a plus 20% crit chance to blades and throwable weapons, but it isn't necessary since the Jinchu Maru Katana has a 100% crit chance whenever you have optical camo. And since we can have it back pretty quickly with the Axolotl, I didn't find that super necessary. The other cyberware under the Intagumas Harry system I'm going to be using is the Pain Editor, which reduces all incoming damage in general, and then Subdermal Armor. At very low cyberware cost, it gives us a bonus to our armor. Other things you can look into would be the Proxy Shield or the Iconic version, which is the Peripheral Inverse. Again, the closer an enemy is, the less damage they do to you. And since we're going to be using a Katana and SMGs for close range, having this can be good. You could also look into Chitin, which is... An extremely durable subcutaneous shell made of genetically modified chitin is basically subdermal armor on crack because this actually provides additional health regen. For our optics, I personally like using the Kiroshi Oracle optics so I can highlight enemies through walls at 20 meters. It also highlights any cameras, turrets, and explosive devices and traps pretty much whenever you enter an area, which is very nice. If you're going stealthy, this can be very good, but you can also use the Kuroshi Cockatrice Optics, which just gives you an increased crit chance by 35%. Like I said, I don't think the increased crit chance is necessary. The only bonus you would get is for your submachine guns, but you can still hit pretty high crit chance with those ones as well. Under my hands, first up, I'm gonna be using the Smart Link, which enables the smart targeting for smart weapons, AKA our prototype Shingen Mark V. So we get a plus 20% target lock on with tier five and a plus 10% crit damage with smart weapons directly links the user's optical implant to the weapon system offering real time weapon info. Again, it's plus two to RAM, but we're not using a cyber deck. Basically, this allows the bullets that travel pretty slow uh, on this weapon versus power weapons to automatically track towards targets. And if you recall, the prototype Shingen Mark V can track three targets at once, which is very good. Then lastly, I'm using Shock Absorber, which just gives us a reduction to our recoil. Under the circulatory system, I personally like using Heal on Kill, which gives me health back whenever I neutralize an enemy. Next, Micro Rotors, which increases my melee attack speed, so my katana can move even faster, which is nice. And then lastly, Adrenaline, booster so i get plus 25 percent stamina whenever i use a melee weapon to neutralize an enemy so when i'm using the katana and get a kill with it i get that stamina back using a katana can consume a good amount of stamina fast if you're not killing enemies so having a way to get even more stamina back is going to be very good again you could also look into bio monitor if you want so it'll automatically heal you when your health drops below 35 percent or if you did want to use blood pump that the, you know the health item essentially like you can put it on in your stuff but it basically is an improved version of those health items i didn't find them necessary to say i'm using optical camo and taking a stealthy approach under legs i personally like using the reinforced tendons for the double jump again it's all about that in air movement tech which is very nice but you can also use link's paws which allows for quieter movement and an increased crouched movement speed so your crouch sprinting can be faster and you can also look into the Leroy ligament system which is just a straight bump to your movement speed you can use what you want but I like the double jump but that ladies and gentlemen is my Oda Cyber Ninja build let me know what you guys think in the comments I've said it a million times there's a lot of ways to build craft in this game and not everything is set in stone so if there is something that you like using for this build in particular definitely let me know in the comments I'm playing this game a lot I'm testing stuff out in this game a lot so I'm definitely willing to hear you out in any event if what you saw was valuable or entertaining to you be sure to drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel and then turn on the bell next to notifications so you don't miss out on any other build videos here on the channel for those who are veterans of the channel, you know I mainly play Destiny 2, so if you want to do PV activities together, PvP, you know, whenever we're doing dungeon carries, raid carries, anything like that, you want to hop in, hop in the chat, we'll figure something out, and if you want to be proactive, join my Discord. You know, people are chatting about anime in there, PC tech, and other video games as well. Lastly, if you want to support the channel even more, you can look into becoming a member. If you don't know what a membership is, it is essentially like a Twitch subscription. Again, you're going to gain access to the exclusive emotes, the monthly badges, and other cool stuff here on the channel for cheaper than what would be on Twitch, actually, which is hilarious. But if you would like more information, 
All you have to do is press the join button next subscribe, and I'll give you a rundown with all the details you need. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been your boy. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.